The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the February 25th, otherwise known as the Fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening live at eight, thank you so much. If you're listening at one o'clock, thank you so much. We're going to try to make this show as pertinent as we can for the 1 p.m. Uh, show. But if you are listening live, we'd love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our tiger's dead. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. equity futures, index futures, trading to the upside. You've got the Dow futures up 65 points. That's two tenths of a percent. 33,220 is the print. NASDAQ futures up 45, three tenths. S&P futures, nine, two tenths. And the Russell, 2,000, a half a percent. Ten points to the upside. She's trading out at 2,003. Over in Asia last night, a bit of a mixed bag. He had the uh, Nikkei up 505 points, nearly 2%. Shanghai was up uh, six tenths. And the Hang Seng was up six tenths percent. Over in uh, Europe this morning, the uh, DAX is having a big day, up 2.5%. So is the FTSE, up 2 and 7 tenths percent. Gold is trading out at 1898. Uh, might be pulling back to test a uh, key level of support. Silver is trading out at 2419. We'll certainly take a look at those. During the show, you've got Lightspeed Crude trading out at 9326. That's up 43 cents. And the 30 year Treasury is down 15 ticks, trading out at 151.31. So let's begin by taking a look at, um, let's do this here. We're going to switch charts. Let's take a look at the equity futures. That's where we're going to begin today. And we're going to begin by taking a look at the daily time frame. And as long as we're over here, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and switch to the eight panel charts. And that way we can get a feel for what the market is communicating to us. But if we take a look at this set of charts here, one thing that you will see is we have a TD9 count bottoms that formed yesterday in the ES, the NQ, and the Dow. Inside the NQ, what you can see, and that's the upper right-hand corner chart, is that price also, or yesterday was also a confirmation of a momentum indicator signal. Now, two bottoms don't make it better than one bottom out there. It's just got two bottoms. But what price did yesterday is price stopped right where, the first level, where a counter trend move should find resistance. Now, it still may do that by day's end. That's that red oscillator and change line. But as we speak at 8.09 in the morning, price is trading above that. So that red line at 8.09 is at uh, 13... 636 and we're at 14,000. So the line is going to move up if price moves up. But if you're listening at 110 and you're above that level, then what price is likely doing, this is the daily time frame for the NQ, is targeting the 14,484 or 14,874. Now the 14, I'm sorry, 14,766. And not that it can't target 14,874, but 14,766 is the TD9 count breakdown level. That's another beauty about the uh, TD9 count pattern. It provides us where breakout support or resistance is at, as well as gives us top and bottom signal. So we've got the bottom signal here. And if price closes above that red oscillator and change line, now a red oscillator and change line is not nearly as strong as a green one. A red one tells us that the price oscillator is below zero. So it's still in somewhat bearish condition, so to speak. But with price above that red line, uh, it's rising. So the price oscillator is rising. So and we've got the bottom signal out here. So price really should continue higher. But if it does 
get deflected by this red oscillator change line, day zen, shouldn't be a surprise to any of us. But right now, the signal here, and what we don't have is a unanimous agreement that price needs to move higher. Now, we do have the bottom signals, absolutely. In the case of the ES Mini, it is likely going to target, should the NQ continue to move the markets higher, and I believe that it will. The uh, the top holdings inside the NDX 100 are suggesting that as well. And so the ES Mini should then go ahead and target the 43.26 level. The case of the Dow, it also formed a TD9 count bottom yesterday. A bullish reversal candle today, which is easy to do because yesterday was a little doji candle, would also generate a road's momentum indicator bottom. Again, two bottoms are not necessarily better than one. But in this instance, what price should do is go target the 33.833 area. That's the red oscillator change. I mean, that's what the value is as of 8, 11 in the morning. It's going to change throughout the day, but that gives you your, your ballpark. Now, if the ES and the N and the YM can close above their red oscillator and change lines, then that gives them target levels, are, which will be profile areas or could be their TD9 breakdown levels. Inside the ES, that TD9 breakdown level is at 45.20. Inside the Dow, it's up at the 35.330 level. Now, the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000. Um, is trade above its red oscillator and change line, and that means it likely wants to go target the 2061 level. So that's what's going on on the daily time frame charts out here. Let's go ahead and switch from this and switch over to our eight panel view. We're still going to stick with the equity futures out here. And um, we'll begin by taking a look at the ES Mini. What we're doing here, folks, is now we have a, a little bit of a larger view. And what I mean by that, first, we could take a look at the monthly chart. You know, where are we at on a monthly basis? Well, on a monthly basis, you've got a TD9 count top, price below a green oscillator and change line. That always says that over time, we might see a move down to 37.20. Now, if we were going to see a move to 37.20, and the question would be, or the question should be, or the question that always pops up in my mind, well, how are we going to know if we're going to move to 37.20? Pretty easy. You have to break through a key level of support on the weekly time frame. Turns out that the key level of support for the ES Mini on a weekly time frame is at 41.26. That is its TD9 count breakout level. Now, even though you don't have a bottom signal here, you're only in bar number six on a weekly basis, pulling back to support is perhaps the most fundamental aspect of trading out here. And that, in fact, is what the ES Mini has done on a weekly basis. So if we were to see a close, and I'm not saying that's going to happen this week, I'm not seeing that's going to happen. But if we did get a weekly close below 41.2675, that would then be the signal that price is trying to make its way back to the 37.20 area. <clears throat> it doesn't mean that there's not other stops along the way to the downside, but that's where price would likely head to. So that's what the monthly and the weekly charts are confirming for us. Back to the daily, we've already beaten that up. So now let's go take a look at intraday charts. On a 30-minute time frame chart, yes, that move higher off of the news that, uh, you know, we don't know if it's real news or not or if it means anything or not, uh, that uh, uh, out of China, supposedly, that uh, Russia is willing to sit down and negotiate with uh, the uh, uh, basically the, the, the folks over in Ukraine. The, the, you know, that basically would just mean what? That would mean uh, telling them what their job is or isn't and what they need to do. But in any event, with regard to the ES Mini, the market responded positively, positively to that. Uh, it did trigger a road's momentum indicator signal. But that alone is not a top. You need a bearish reversal candle. And so right now, with the price above the oscillator and change line and the top of its profile, these are bullish conditions. So for the 30-minute time frame chart, the signal here is that price should continue to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be right back. And uh, what we'll do is we'll switch off of the uh, equity futures. We can come back to these. We'll go to one of the first requests that we've got, which is Nordic American Tankers. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. 818 in the morning. Thanks so much for listening in, whether it's at the 118 time frame or certainly live. We're going to uh, begin by taking a look at Nordic American Tankers. Uh, that is a request from Brent in Martinez, California. He's up early. He says, I'd appreciate your analysis on NAT, uh, considering a long position. Their earnings came out this morning. That removes an unknown, which is helpful. In the levels you can identify in the daily, weekly uh, for both support and resistance would be great. Have a fantastic weekend. You do as well. So big move yesterday, a uh, wide ranging bar taking out the uh, top of its bearish structured daily profile. Nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. Now, what price did also, though, Brent, is it stopped right at the uh, center, an uh, essence of its weekly profile. It's a bearish. So we have a bull. We had a bearish structured daily profile. We now have a bearish and we have a bearish structured weekly profile that formed last week. So price stopped right at a trend line as well as basically at the center of that weekly profile. That's a resistance level, and that is at 173. The close was 171. So if price can really take out, so your, your resistance level is between 173 and 184 right now, and that's coming from the weekly profile. Price can get above that, the next profile resistance level would be at 275. Let's go pull over the white background charts, see what other information we can provide to uh, Brent. If we take a look at a resistance level on the daily time frame, where price should be targeting is 184. 184 is its TD9 count breakdown level. If, in fact, price can close above that on a daily basis, that suggests it is signaling a change in trend and a move to the upside. Its next battle would be at $2 even, Stephen. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart about two weeks ago, three weeks, one, two weeks ago, uh, we had a, it, this generated a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom for that weekly time frame. Now, again, price is trading with inside that profile, bearish in structure. A close above 184, and 184 was the daily resistance level as well. That's the TD9 count breakdown area, breakdown level. So a close above 184 <coughs> for the daily gives us a change in trend. For the weekly, says a move up to 243 would be likely. That is its breakdown level. As finally switching over to the monthly time frame chart, I don't really have anything out here per se. Uh, this might or might not become bar number eight. Uh, you won't, really won't know. So we can't really use the, the monthly time frame chart for much. On a 30-minute basis, uh, as we went into the close yesterday, Brent, it was bar number seven that formed. So likely we're going to see, or this could or should, form a, a short-term top here, and that would occur by, by 1030. 
if it does uh, form that, with, that would be a TD9 count top. I can't guarantee that's what's going to happen because we're only bar number seven, but that's something that I would be looking at. 65-minute time frame says, hey, Steve, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I already have a TD9 count top. So that would say that if you saw a hourly close or 65-minute close, so that would be a close at uh, 1035 in the morning, above 171, that is suggesting a strong momentum to move to the upside. 130-minute chart looks like it wants to continue to move higher. Nice rose momentum indicator signal. It's suggesting 187, uh, 177 coming from the 195-minute chart out there. So Nordic American Takers looks great. The question is, can we get some type of a pullback? If you did get a pullback into the 155, 159 level, that would most certainly be a buy. But we don't have any signals, Brent, to suggest that that's what's going to happen. But it does look like Nordic American Takers has put in a bottom. And a close above 184 would uh, go a long way to saying that is a true statement. Let's go to our next request out here. This is coming from Hector and Patty. And Hector and Patty want to take a look at the energy sector. So let's get their email up on my screen. Their email reads like this. Happy Fabulous Friday. Back at you. XLE, with end of month being next Monday, how is the XLE shaping up? Well, let's go take a look at it. So if we look at the XLE, there's a nice confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. It has a B point that formed on January 18th. The volume there was 41 million shares. When price took that out, it was with 45 million shares. The one-to-one -one confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside takes us to 73.71. Now, that is going to be the case as long as price remains above the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. And that is at 66.73. If price were to close below that, it's not that the A to B equals CD pattern won't still take place out here, but it says, hey, you've got a pit stop. And right now, with regard to pit stop, at least on these black background charts, boy, support is way down below. It's 59.41. So I'm not saying that's where it's headed to, but what you're looking for, so you're asking, how is it shaping up in the month end? Let's back, let's just pull over the XLE charts out here. Let's answer the month end question first. And by month end, I'm just going to go to the monthly time frame chart. So as we take a look at it, what we see out here is nothing more than a bullish signal. You see the A to B equals CD pattern. I don't have it drawn in here, but you can visually see that. On a monthly basis, we don't have any kind of a topping signal. If anything, this is suggesting over time, the XLE wants to run to 79.11. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, weekly time frame chart does not have a, a topping signal. Oh, I take that back. Uh... uh and I don't take that back. And the XLE on a weekly basis out here, you don't have a topping signal. And what price has done so far this week, Hector and Patty's pulled back the test and rejected screen oscillator and change line. And that's really a key as well. So you've got two keys. You've got the bottom of the daily profile. But now we're going to shift that, which I believe is above 65.79. Let me, yeah, it's at 66.73. Um, so on the weekly, so the real level that price would need to close below to say, ew, we've got some uh, trouble in River City, trouble meaning a retracement here, would be 65.79 or thereabouts. That number is going to change as price moves up or down. But basically, you're looking at that oscillator and change line, and that's from the uh, weekly time frame chart. So overall, everything looks pretty good. Um, but the question is, will price hold those support levels? And there is, I, I take it back now on the daily, I must have been looking at the weekly chart. Let me see here. Yeah, it was the weekly chart before. The daily time frame chart does have a confirmed roads momentum indicator top, as well as a, uh, not a TD, it might even have a TD9 count top. But you've got one top, that's all you need, and that's led to this consolidation. So if, Hector and Patty, if price were to close below 66.73, that's the daily bullish structure profile out there, then what we would see is price pulling back to 61.47. So we don't have that message right now, but at day's end, you might have that message. Although with Lightspeed Crew trading up a bit, I don't think that that's what's likely to occur out here. But uh, you just have to watch these levels. So 66.73 inside the energy sector, the XLE. Thanks so much for writing in, Hector and Patty, as well as uh, Brent. That takes care of all the questions that have come in by email. But we've got another one, and this is from the Tiger's Den. And what uh, we want to look at here is a request was to take a look at the Nugget. N-U-G-T, which is the 3X, or 2X, I should say. It's a 2X ETF for the uh, gold miners out there. So our preference is really to take a look at the GDX, but we're going to look at it from a nugget standpoint. And from a nugget standpoint, this formed a brand-new bearish structured profile below price two days ago on Wednesday. Now, that is a bullish outcome. When you, find, when you generate a profile below price, 
This is a bullish signal. Now, what price did yesterday in the nugget was it pulled back and it tested the top of that profile. If it's just a counter trend move to the downside, where price should find support would be 52.84. So SNP was looking for that uh, entry point. That would be one place to look at. Now, let's just switch over real quickly and see where this is trading in the pre-market. Gold had pulled back. So uh, we said, what, 52.84, N-U-G-T. 55.51. So it's uh, okay. Good. I've got it actually up on my screen here. So price is uh, still even above the top of the uh, daily profile. But you're asking for an entry point. That would most certainly be an entry point. It could also be 54.27 out here. Let's pull over those white background charts. See if there's any other signals. You know what? We're going into a break here. Let's do this. Let's just uh, wait a, a few seconds. We'll be back in about three minutes. We can see yesterday's pullback S and P was also a test and rejection of that green oscillator and change line. That too could be an entry point. That's at 54.63. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so you got Dow Equity Futures up 116, and NASDAQ up 79, S&P's up 18, Russell is up 11. Of course, it's 8.30 in the morning. If you're listening at 1.30, thanks so much for uh, doing that. Much appreciated. We're really taking a look at the nugget before we went into the uh, breakout there. And that means we're also, in order to do that, we really have to take a look at the GDX, see if it's generating similar type messages. And the request was to take a look at potential entry areas. And so because of its uh, bearish structured daily profile, 
that formed below price, which is bullish. Any counter trend move should find support between 52.84 and 54.27. So we've already established those as buy points. The green oscillator and change on a daily time frame is another one. That's about 54.63. So that's right near the top of that daily profile. And that's what that shows. So let's do this here. Uh, let's go take, in order to really do this uh, evaluation properly, we want to take a look at the GDX. We want to take a look at the 1X, not the 2X, and see if it has similar messages out here. And my recommendation is really to trade off of the, uh, the G, just trade nugget off of what the GDX is communicating. And you can see here's a totally different message. Now, when I say a totally different message, is price here has a profile that formed uh, two days ago, and price is back inside that. So 35.11, this suggests that the GDX could pull back to 3283 or 3101. Now, in order to make that pullback or one potential buy area inside the GDX would be its green oscillator and change line. That was tested and rejected yesterday, so that's 3343. If you were to get a close below that, then that suggests pulling back into one of these other profile levels, 3283, 3101, 2994. So the signal here inside the GDX would be testing and holding the 3343 level. Of course, as price moves down to a support area, what you like to see on the intraday time frame charts is some type of bottom signal. Well, here, price had pulled back yesterday. On a 50-minute basis, it generated a TD nine count bottom. Okay, so that's one bottom signal to suggest, okay, I do want to move higher, or at least maybe it's a retest of that level. You'd like to see that hold. The 30-minute time frame chart out here does not have a bottom signal. It has wave number four. That's letter D. And you've got an oscillator and change line that had to change colors, uh, suggesting to move up and to test that 3430. In essence, what this is telling you is you want to see a close back above 3450 to be on its merry way to higher price. The 65-minute time frame chart, no topping signal or no bottoming signal, I should say, there. On a uh, 130, no bottom. Well, a price did hold support, the, the bottom of that profile out there. And on the 195-minute chart, nothing there to help us out. So the other element that you have to take a look at out here, uh, you know, not to complicate things, and we're really trying not to complicate things, but we've got to understand what's going on inside of Goldilocks, which is pulling back. So really, we've gone now from the nugget to the GDX. But if you were to ask me what decisions with regard to the nugget and the GDX are you going to make, where's, where are you really going to make that from? I would say a P from Goldilocks. In the case of gold out here, it may be pulling back. Well, it is pulling back as we speak right now. It may be pulling back to test its oscillator and change line. And that would be 1887. So S&P, if you were to see a close below 1887, maybe 1886, because that number will change just a tad, then that suggests that uh, the GDX or the Nugget are not ready for prime time. So what do you do when price gets back there? Look, you, you go ahead, you pull the trigger if you've been looking for it. If it doesn't hold, then you go ahead and you uh, take a, uh, hopefully a, a small a loss on that position. But you want to see gold moving higher holding key support levels. That's just one support level, 1887. There are others out there, but in essence, that's what you'd be looking for. Now, what we really want to do, we take a look at gold, is go down and take a look at the, inter, the intraday time period charts. And let's just begin with the 30 minute. And the 30 minute has a, a TD nine count bottom. That TD nine count bottom low was 1894.50. The close on that previous bar was at uh, 1894.90. So that TD nine count bottom is still in place out here. SMA, uh, SNP, my apology, the SMH is what you see. I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. That's why I really don't uh, chew gum. If we take but if price were to close below that TD9 count, that's at the 1894.50, then that's going to signal lower price. That lower price takes you back to getting back to the daily oscillator and change line. And so you would be waiting for that in the 1887 area. Yeah. Yeah. 1887 area, but most likely what you'd then be watching is this swing point out here, this swing point from uh, about fifth, three, three o'clock yesterday, and that's anywhere between 1878.60 to 1893.50. But right now you've got a bottom that is held, 60-minute uh, time frame chart for gold doesn't have uh, any type of uh, signal force. In fact, the signal right now is bearish. And it's bearish because price is below the red oscillator and change line and below the bottom of that profile. The two-hour time frame chart, what do we have? Not much, all other than price pulling back to test support, a breakout level of 1894. So it's really more than not much. A key level of support is holding there. So there's another area to be watching S&P, and that's at 1894.40 level. The four-hour time frame chart, price is below the bottom of that profile. Again, everything here is suggesting right now that gold should pull back. The only chart that is not suggesting that is this 30-minute chart. So you've just got to watch that bottom there. That will give you the clue. Now, if this bottom holds and price can get above the oscillator and change line on a 30-minute basis at 1902, 
That should then take price up to its resistance levels, 1913-40, 1916-40, 1920-40, a lot of 40s out there. Let's add one more 40, 1921-40. Those were either profile levels or the TD9 count breakdown level. So how do we answer this? I think you answer this by really focusing in on this 30 minute time frame chart, SNP, watching this for a bit of time. Look, we've got almost an hour before the market opens. If you see a close below that, that's going to tell you gold is still pulling back. And then you're back to watching that daily time frame. You've got the price levels for the Nugget and the GDX out there. I'd really keep one eye on each of them. That means you need a third eye. And uh, that's a beautiful thing. So thanks so much for the request out there. I believe we've taken care of all the requests so far. I'm just going to check my email and make sure. Yeah, nothing else has come in. So now what do we want to do next? Let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the equity uh, charts out there. And the equity chart we're going to go take a look at is the NQ. We went into detail on the uh, on the ES Mini. Now let's do the same and let's go switch back and do it for the NQ out here. Oh, I take we're going to we we have call ahead seating. And in call head seating, that means we go right to the caller. So let's go out to Jerry in Michigan. Jerry, what part of Michigan are you from? And thanks for calling and thanks for holding. Uh, I all got it a little wrong. It's Gary from New Buffalo, Michigan. How you doing, Steve? Oh, got it. Okay. Well, all right. Sorry. Sorry <laughs> about right. that. Uh, it's Friday. We were talking cocktail time. You know, let's come on. We we coming down and having a few cocktails and enjoying that weather you got there. <laughs> that sounds um, good. I'd love to. How are you doing? Doing, doing, doing great. Thanks so much for asking. In fact, uh, doing really well. I got the uh, great news yesterday that I have another grandchild on the way. So that is a, a beautiful thing. And that's going to be a October uh, celebration out there. So I'd say Stevie is having a good day and a good week. Oh, oh you're seeing guys. exciting. No, that's, that's the best. I mean, that's what it, it's all about, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. We're, we're, we're building a baseball team in the uh, Rhodes <laughs> family out here. So uh, we just have a few more to go and, and then we'll be all set. <laughs> The farm That's, team for the Tigers. Yeah, you exactly. Go. Exactly. Hey, so you want to take a look at what my question is. You were into gold, so I thought it was appropriate, and then you were moving into the NQ, which is kind of tying into my macro view, and I may be all wet. I've been wet before. Um, but I did move out of New Skin uh, a few weeks ago pretty big uh, into Palantir, so maybe that will work out because I love that bottom and I love that company. Um, but the um, the question I have is more macro. The idea is, is that – um, is gold, you know, and look at the bonds. I mean, my long term, because of the people I'm reading and stuff like that, is that the bonds are going to go, uh, potentially, interest rates are going to go down. Uh, I have a deflationary long term view um, based on what the people I follow. But the point is, is that, and I think you kind of talked about some of that too from a longer term perspective. Hey, Gary, I, know Gary, Gary, I, I apologize thing. for interrupting, so, Gary. I want you to hold that thought because we're going to a break here. Yeah, so let's okay, come back. It. Let's come back, share that thought with us, and uh, we'll take a look at the TLT. We'll be right back, folks. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with Gary in New Buffalo, Michigan. We're uh, going to go uh, rip apart the uh, 30-year Treasury. So, uh, uh, Gary, uh, thanks so much for uh, for uh, for calling again. And uh, so, go ahead with your your thought process, and and, and let me know what is it that I can provide Here, to you. To make it real quick. I mean, the, um, it's more obviously macro, and the idea is is that I'm um, and it ties into if there is this um, deflationary. Um, uh, longer term trend that we go into and interest rates are coming down I, I, the inverse typically in my understanding is that gold then suffers and if gold suffering is interest rates now going to start maybe moving um uh lower and the the tlt going up and does that tie into you know the whole deflationary kind of idea of some of the other things like the uh fact that now the interest rates go down and and the uh qqq goes up because you know they're not at, as risk as interest rates are going down so it's, it's a big macro kind of thing I'm trying sure to figure out my head. okay so let's take a look at the uh, at the bigger picture and in a smaller picture for the 30-year treasury so first on the bigger picture and, and in order to really take a look at the tlt folks we really need to understand what's going on in the underlying instrument which is basically but not completely is the 30-year treasury so this is where we get our signals from so as we take a look at signals here you've got a td9 count bottom on a monthly basis that formed in march of 2021 the low of that is 15307 i believe yeah 15307 so on monday Gary, if you were to see a close below 153.07 or 152.03 right now, that signal would be that the 30-year Treasury is going to head lower. That would be at 139.14 out there. So that would say, eh, maybe what you're thinking isn't necessarily going to come to fruition. Now, the cool thing is that we've got a little bit of, we've got some, we've got a couple of different messages out here. And what I mean by that is if we take a look at last week for the 30-year Treasury, that generated a TD9 count bottom. So that says that last week's low is really, really important. And last week's low was 150, 12, 150, uh, 150 and 12, 30 seconds out there. If price were to close below that, then you'd have a real confirmation that the 30-year Treasury is headed lower, rates would be headed higher. If we look at the daily time frame, so you've got nice bottom on the weekly to support your thought process and decision out there that the 30-year Treasury should move higher. But what's also transpired this week is price got up and it tested and rejected that weekly oscillator and change line, which is red, and it's below the bottom of a profile. That's really a bearish message, but really we have to classify this as neutral. And the reason is because we still have that valid TD9 count for the weekly time frame. Does that make sense, what I'm saying first, before I continue? Definitely does. 
Okay, so the daily time frame also has a bottom. So you got a weekly bottom, a daily bottom. The daily bottom was a TD9 count, Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal. I believe that's still the low from last week, which is at the 150 yeah, and 12, 30 seconds out there. So any close below that says, sorry, 30-year Treasury is headed lower out here. Now, what transpired yesterday on the 30-year Treasury was it made a nice move. It found resistance at the top of its uh, profile out there, uh, but price is still trading with inside that profile, so I don't have a clear message here. Uh, but those are the areas or those are the price points that I think from the bigger picture, which what you're really looking for, that you need to be paying attention to. So the first is going to perhaps come from the monthly time frame chart on Monday. Of course, any close below the weekly TD9 count or, uh, or the uh, Rhodes Mint indicator on the daily that's going to say those patterns have failed and that the 30-year treasury is headed lower which would mean rates would be headed higher now on the intraday time frames out here i don't have a whole lot of anything i mean i don't have a bottom signal other than on the five hour chart and so this is another area for you to watch which is that price had pulled back it did wave number seven that's letter g that's here i'll just expand out the chart and then we're all just looking at the same thing so on a five hour basis what this did was it made a nice move up to wave number seven, letter G. Also kind of referred to as part of the Basil Chapman uh, uh, a series out there as the rogue wave. Now, what happened here is that price is pulled back and it's testing this breakout level. And that's at 152. So this is a kind of a longer term time frame, the five hour. Maybe it's going to give you a signal for what the daily is thinking and the weekly. And if you're to see a close uh, below 152, this next candle, this candle session ends at nine. The next one would be at two. Let me make sure it's nine. Yeah, nine. The next one would be at two. And you'd, you'd need to see two consecutive closes below that level. So there, here's the areas to watch. Those are the price levels to watch. Gary, are there any questions about the information I've shared with you so far? It's excellent as always, Steve. Oh, you're great. You're amazing. So thank well, you. You 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 bet. And thank you so much for calling. Have a uh, fantastic uh, weekend, and we'll look forward to uh, speaking to you again hopefully next week. And enjoy the family. Blessings. You bet. You bet. That was Gary in New Buffalo, Michigan. So uh, we were going to go take a look, and we still are. Let's do that here. We've got to, we've got a few minutes. Let's go back and now. Well, let me just make one check here. Just want to make sure there's no requests that have come by phone. I don't see anything inside the Tigers Den. I don't see anything by phone. So now let's go uh, rip apart the NQ out here. Try to get a feel for what it's communicating to you and I. And as we look at it, and let's uh, do the same kind of thing. Let's start with the bigger picture. On the bigger picture, the monthly time frame, you've got a Rose Mentum indicator top. Price below the green oscillator and change line suggests move back to 12207. How are we going to know if price is going to move back to 12207 real easily? Price would have to close below 13462.25. 13462.25 is a TD9 count breakout level for the weekly time frame. This is going to, or looks like it's going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count. Uh, out here whether it's a hammer candle at week's end or not i don't know it doesn't matter it's not really at the completion of a pattern so this did have a roads momentum indicator top price is pulled back to test support when you're pulling back to test support on a weekly basis you go to the daily time frame to see if it's giving you a bottoming signal and guess what that's what took place yesterday we talked about at the open you got a td9 count bottom a roads momentum indicator bottom price right now trading above its red oscillator and change line that suggests to move up to the 14 484 14,766 area. Now let's go take a look at the intraday charts. The 30-minute chart says, well, all that makes sense. But at about either 9 or 9.30, and right now I'd go push for the 9.30 time frame, we should see selling out of the gate. Now it could start at 9 o'clock. And why would Stevie even say that? Because bar number 8 completed at 8.30, and bar number 9 is going to complete at 9. And what we know about the TD9 count topping or bottoming signal is that the higher low of bar... It needs to be on either bar eight, bar nine, or the bar following bar number nine. Now, for those of you listening in live, and it's 849, this is the cool pattern. Whether it, Take a look at the high, uh, the, the highest high, whether it's the high as of right now, the session we're in the 30-minute bar at nine or 930. And that becomes your threshold level. If you see a close above that, it says the TD nine count pattern failed, but didn't fail so much. It failed from the standpoint of didn't stop price and tells us for that time frame you have a strong momentum move to the upside. And that would be a signal that price starts to head higher out here. It is the 30 minute time frame that is the only time frame that I see that has a topping pattern out here. Right now, the 120 minute time frame is trading above a key level of resistance. That's the breakdown area. And that's at the 34033 area. So, the call right now, because I believe the NQ is the one that is mostly controlling the markets out here, is you should expect and anticipate some type of top to form between 9 and 9.30. And if that's the case, the first pullback should take us back to the oscillator and change line. That's about 13,996.
below that, we'd look at a move to 13,875, 13,811, or 13,773. And if price were to close below 13,773, that says there's something else going on, and we take a look at it. But that's what it looks like as we speak right now for the NQ. And we come back from this break. We're going to go out to Paramus, New Jersey. Gary had mentioned this stock, Palantir. And Victor, that's one of the stocks that he loves the most. So when we come back from this break, we'll go out to Victor in Paramus, New Jersey. We'll finish the show. Take a look at PLTR. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, billable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back up, folks. We're going to do a little bottom fishing with Victor in Paramus, New Jersey. That means we're going for the big grouper out here as we take a look at Palantir, which definitely formed a bottom pattern yesterday. Victor, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? How can I best help you? Good. I think that goes into a wedge shape and we hit another low because they have one billion shares outstanding, some crazy amount of outstanding shares. Is this a bottom or not? 
Well, what I can share with you is yesterday, uh, yesterday's candle was a, a bullish engulfing candle, and that confirmed a rose momentum indicator signal. So you've got your confirmed bottom. It was also wave number seven, that's letter G. So you've really got two bottoming patterns that are out here. And if we take a look at what, mm -hmm. what has transpired on the weekly basis, and I won't know until the end of the week, nor will you, but price right now is testing its IPO swing point on a weekly basis. And that's the swing point from September 28, 2020. The volume there was 517 million shares. You were at 317 million as of yesterday. So odds favor, if price closed above 1142, you then have a test and rejection of a key swing point on lighter volume. That's another bottom signal. Price mm -hmm. also testing the uh, top of the weekly, I'm uh, sorry, the monthly uh, IPO swing point out there. And that uh, top is at 1110. So you've got bottoming signals across the board for Palantir. Now what you've got to deal with are the battlegrounds. Where are the battles? Well, the first battle is going to be at 1252. 1252 is the bottom of the weekly profile. The second battle is 1265. 1265 is the bottom of the daily profile. The next battle above that is at 1355 to 14. That is a bearish structured daily profile. That is where price has to close above $14 to uh, give you a change in trend signal. And we'll just make it easy. A close above 1483 because you also have a weekly bearish structured profile. That would give you a change in trend signal. So, Victor, to answer your question, has Palantir given us bottom mean signals or patterns? Confirmed. The answer is yes on the daily, likely on the weekly, if it closes above 1142, and you've got those battles up ahead. So, uh, Victor, I hope that helps answer your question. Best of luck yep. to you on that trade. Folks, thanks so much for joining me live. Uh, and if you're listening to the Archive Show, thanks so much for doing that on Monday. We'll be back to the normal programming. So stay tuned for some great uh, programming at 9 o'clock. You're listening to Tommy O'Brien with the Morning Market Kickout. And at uh, 2 p.m., you're listening to your favorite polar bear, David White. Have a fantastic weekend, folks.